here's our ship. Here's the boundaries. The ship goes through the boundaries. Not an ideal situation. We shall make the ship respect the boundaries using a component. And I hope you're starting to see the elegance or the beauty in the component design pattern. We have our ship. It's our entity. And then we have the renderer component, which is responsible for drawing the ship. We have the physics component, which is responsible to move the ship around with acceleration and velocity and that sort of thing. Then we also add the controller component, which responds to keyboard input and that sort of thing. And so the next component I want to build is the boundary handler component. Right, and so that's that's where we're going with this. Let's get that off the screen. Go to the Solution Explorer. The Boundary Handler, it could be game-specific. I'm tempted to add it to the game, but I think it's something we, we might reuse. We could possibly reuse, and so we'll put it in the engine. Components, add class, enter, Boundary Handler component. Uh, enter. I'm going to hit Control K O, which runs the macro to clean up all the the uh, using or the preprocessor guards. However, I noticed this morning uh, Visual Studio 2012, which we will soon move to. I should. It's 2013, and here I am still using 2010. But Visual Studio 2012 doesn't support recording macros and playing them back directly, and so. Well, I'm not sure what, where, where we will get with that, but I still have macros, control KO. There we go, alt drag, underscore, alt drag, underscore, control alt L, compilation unit. Let's get rid of the constructor and destructor. I'm going to grab both of these, drag them into components, and we need to pound include entities, entities slash component dot H. I can program before IntelliSense. I've been programming since before IntelliSense was out. Public, oh this needs to be in the namespace. Entities, control N, curlies, control KF, public entities, oh I don't need to say the namespace anymore. Component, and then let's go look at the way we handled the boundaries in the old Window my gl window dot cpp uh, boundary verts boundary indices num boundary verts holy smokes lots of boundary stuff get me to handle boundaries I guess I could have searched for handle boundaries f12 control mm would usually open that but my hotkeys don't work with my recording software I'm going to grab this code. Looks like this is good code that should go in an update function. In fact, I'm going to say new vertical tab group. We'll keep that on the right for our reference. We shall override the update function inside of component. And oh, I guess the CPP is right here. Namespace entities. And then it's boundary handler component update void. Boundary handler component update oh IntelliSense is back thank you it's nice of you to join us control V uh, control KF and we need to pound include vector 3d pound include math vector 3d using math vector 3d I should get rid of all these the uint I believe uint was in type defs and miscellaneous. Pound include miscellaneous type defs. And then what are we missing here? Old ship position, ship velocity, boundary vert. So velocity comes from the physics component. And the position also comes from the physics component. So we're going to need to store a pointer away to the physics component. I'm moving boundary handler components header file here. And if I recall, well, I don't recall. That's why I'm looking it up, actually. Components, physics components, that's right. So class physics 
component and we'll store away store a pointer to the physics component away physics component pointer physics which means using the pattern we've seen in previous videos bool initialize in fact we'll put that before the update control c we shall override the initialize and grab the physics component control c control v and physics gets get parent get component we need to pound include entities or entity pound include entities entity and get component which component do we want we want the physics physics component and we need to actually pound include physics component in the header file so pound include entities phys components physics component and then as we did before return physics physics not null All right, if we got physics we're good so now I can say uh, oh the position doesn't come from physics it's actually dir and parent position and then I can say get parent position and again if you don't remember what all this code does go look at the videos where we actually built this code my goal in these videos is just to refactor to a more flexible design instead of that hodgepodge of all that code we had in the mygl window ship velocity we need to say physics your velocity will change physics to your velocity <laughs> look at all this physics velocity project on to normal old ship position that's something we should maintain in the boundary handler component so let me bring the header file for boundary handler component pound include math vector 3d and then math vector 3d old ship position which means I no longer need to include vector 3d in this compilation unit because my header file that belongs to this compilation unit will include it in for us and then we just need the boundary verts and the num boundary verts and I want to make that a constant which means I'm going to need type defs up here and then oh I can't make it a constant because then I'll have to define the constructor and with these components we're having the components be part of the game do you remember from my game in the header file remember that we're defining all these components right here as part of the makeup of a my game instance and so we can't really define what goes in the constructor here unless we invoke the constructor from our constructor and I'm trying to stick with this initialize shutdown pattern so I have to forfeit all those C++ features we'll just say you int I could solve this with a const cast but ugh, that'd be bad I'll just say num I don't know if it'd be bad actually maybe it wouldn't be bad we'll uppercase it at least a hint that we shouldn't change it so that'll be num bound reverts and then bound reverts this needs to be a vector 3D, 3D vector pointer. So const, oops, const, uh, math, vector 3D pointer, boundary verts. And I need to pass this data in through here. I'm at a, I have a con contundrum, is that the right word? Basically, I can't use the constructor for reasons that I said just a few seconds ago. And then I can't add them to initialize because this is an override of the component classes initialize so that our entity can call initialize for us. And so a pattern I use is void set data. I add a set data function to my components and I know if a component has set data then I need to call it. But one way I want to verify that set data is called is let's let's actually give this thing a constructor 
boundary handler component and let's define the constructor to at least set our pointer values physics and boundary verts to null so we'll go down here uh, like so boundary handler component with colons and then I'll say boundary verts will set to null we have to do that explicitly Otherwise, we get whatever was there if we're defined on the stack or defined in the program image, then we get we will get null. And anyway, I don't want to get into all those rules. Let's be specific here. Physics gets null. And then down here, I'm going to assert, I want to say, hey, return physics not null, because I guess we got it here, so I don't necessarily need that there, but I'll leave it there anyway. And, sorry, I just hit page up or page down or something. Physics not null, and... Boundary verts not null. Okay, when's the only time that boundary verts will not be null? If the client called set data. If we fail to call set data, then this initialize shall fail. All right, what's the data we need? We need a uint, or let's do the pointer first. In fact, generally I like to list the pointer before the size. So math vector 3D pointer. Boundary verts, uint, num, boundary verts. I don't like all that side scrolling, so let's just put these on new lines. Vertical scrolling I'm okay with. And let's make a set data function. Uh, this is the end of update there. So I think set data is kind of initialized this, so I'll actually put set to set data right here. Uh, control KF. And here's the body. And we need to scope it appropriately. And then here I'm just going to say this boundary verts gets boundary verts. And num boundary verts gets num boundary verts all right here's hoping that works but if you notice all i did was copy and paste most of the code and work our our data to get the data in here and if ideally i can just add this component to my ship and it will do its job i'm going to go to my game and pound include Entities, components, not component, components, boundary handler component. And then down here, maybe we're done with this. I'm going to save all the files, close that. Here are our other components. Entities, boundary handler component, boundary handler, or ship boundary handler. Let's be consistent with what we're doing with the other components here. Ship boundary handler. And then in initialize ship, my game.cpp. And initialize ship, click F12. Where you can say ship dot add component. Order is important. Order is important. Let's do this after physics. We'll allow physics to get us past the boundary, and if it's past the boundary, then we'll allow the boundary handler to fix that boundary. Ship boundary handler. Control F5. Well, let's see. Control Shift B. Let's first see if we build first. And linker errors, of course, linker errors. Boundary handler component. Declaration, specification, DL export. Can you tell I'm getting a little tired? This is like my sixth, seventh video on this one sitting. Control Shift B, build started, build succeeded. Control F5, oh, something failed. Why'd that fail? Something's failing, return faults, the whole game's shutting down. I have a hunch it's probably in boundary. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to call set data. 
Oh, at least we put that check in there. Look at that. I shot myself as soon as I... Oh. Right here, remember, we went to all the effort to say boundary verts gets null, and then I said return boundary vault verts not null, and I did that to protect myself, and of course I forgot to call set data. So there you go. There's proof that if, you, if you're proactive and add some redundancy and try to protect yourself, that's a good thing. If you... Uh, I watch a lot of, oh, on National Geographic, there's this show, it's like Air Crash Investigations or something. And there's a ton of them on YouTube, go check them out and watch them. But uh, I notice a recurring theme amongst all the engineering with airliners is redundancies. They have several redundant systems. If one fails, then another one will take over, and the second one is designed differently than the first and that sort of thing. Anyway, so here we're adding redundancies. So ship dot set, or not ship dot set data, ship boundary handler dot set data and you need the boundary verts boundary verts and the num is it num num boundary verts like that okay here's open control f5 18 minutes on this video i'm gonna fly the ship around and hope ah it's buggy there's some bug with it. But hey, we're making progress. This video is almost 20 minutes long. I'm going to stop and fix the bug in the next video. Ha! I lied. I'm not going to fix it in the next video. I'm going to fix it in this video. We simply forgot to update the old ship position to whatever the position is in the boundary handler component. But you can see, hey, we're bouncing off the walls. That's kind of cool. In the next video, I want to work on getting the lurper up here and lurping, and then after that, I can really show you some, or I can drill home the elegance of the component design pattern. I hope you're starting to see it, though.